in motion is Sewell. Goff to throw. Wants to throw it to Sewell. Oh, he oh, caught it. Boy, yes. Sewell on a first down. Oh, yes. the big man dives down to the 31 yard line. Oh, that is beautiful. Welcome to the 20 in the Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft and fans. It is football season again. Training camp begins for the Detroit Lions in Allen Park this weekend. And because of that, I thought it would be a great time to welcome in one of the all-time greats, Peter King, author of Football Morning in America with NBC Sports. You guys know him. He's everywhere. He's been doing this for a long, long time. Peter King, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Tim, thanks a lot for asking me. Uh, that's a... Uh... That's a cool background you have there. And I'll tell you, it's interesting at this time of year because I always do a training camp schedule. I'm one of the dinosaurs. I still go to a lot of camps. Uh, I might be the last, really. But anyway, um, never really ever it, that I remember has Detroit been a must stop. And that's the difference in what is happening with, you know, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and, and that franchise and, you know, good for the lions. It's, I've always thought Tim that, you know, it's, it's never good if some team stinks all the time. It just, it's not, it's not good for the game. It certainly isn't good for fan bases. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm so happy. I mean, this is my 40th year covering the NFL. And I always thought, man, I hope this was maybe 10 plus years ago. I said, I hope before I get out of this, that the, the bills and the Browns and the lions could at least be competent, you know? And uh, so the bills certainly are, the Browns seem to be heading that way and the lions look to be heading that way too. So I think it's very, very good for football that there's been a little bit of a changing of the guard. No, I'm glad you're making a stop here in Allen Park for, for training camp. It, it, and Peter, to, to, to your similar comment, I mean, I, I've been covering this team for 15 years and I can't remember ever being there being this much excitement around the team heading into camp. Uh, you know, they were one of the, the youngest rosters in football last year and you saw how they ended last year, eight and two. I, I, I guarantee there's no team in the NFC that wanted to see, see the Detroit Lions in the playoffs last year had they made it. Um, and so I, I, you just, do, do people nationally kind of feel that excitement as well and, and, and think that this is a year that really Detroit can, can really compete in the NFC, get into the playoffs and, and really make some some noise is there that buzz because I know you've ranked the teams one through 32 you do it every year and, and you had the Lions really high up at, at six so obviously you feel that excitement do you get that sense nationally that there's this excitement around this team as well I think so I mean to the point now Tim where everybody is saying you know hey hold on here the Lions are not the the 63 Packers or the 65 Packers so everybody you know just settle down and rightfully so. But what happens now, Tim, is that, um, you know, look, when I started covering football, I, I was at the Cincinnati Inquirer and I did other things in the off season. <laughs> you know, I, I covered some baseball. There was a, a week in 1984, the first year I covered the Bengals that I, I had to cover high school football game on Friday night. And it's just, the world has changed and I would say it's probably 300% crazier now covering the NFL than it was. So I understand why people are so into it uh, and why everybody, you know, and everybody's paid to have an opinion. My opinion is that the lions look to me now it's, we're still in July. Uh, I haven't made my camp trip yet. I'm not, sitting here saying, yep, Lions are winning the division. But as of right now, to me, I think there's a good chance I'll pick the Lions to win the division. And I think it's because essentially, I, I, I thought last year was a really, really interesting year 
for the Lions because I remember when they were in the middle of that five game losing streak early in the season. And, you know, they're giving up 30 and 45 and 31 or whatever it is they're giving up, but they're just getting mashed. And so I remember just thinking to myself, man, was I wrong about Dan Campbell? You know, was I wrong about this team? And what I really remember about it, and Tim, look, I'm not, I don't, I don't cover the Lions in a granular the way, the way you do, the way the, you know, people from the free press and, you know, local guys and, and women do. I don't do that. But I just remember that Dan Campbell, I always, I think he really handled this well because he basically said, hey, listen, this isn't going to do for our defense. And, and Aaron Glenn, I'm sure, rightfully so, felt, I, I agree with, with Dan, we can't keep giving up 35 a game or whatever they were averaging early. And so that kind of got fixed. And then they became a really powerful team offensively. And I remember watching the, uh, the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars and everybody still thought, ah, the Jaguars aren't any good anyway. But they put up 40 on the Jaguars. And I remember watching it saying, look, you know, uh, it, this team has the requisite weapons and is good enough on defense right now to play a challenging game against any team in football. And, and you know, whenever the last time was that that they swept the Packers during a season, I think it goes back to the Stone Age. But that that is a tremendous accomplishment. Um, and, and again, it's odd because at the end of the season, the Lions were one of the best 14 teams in football without any question. They just didn't make the playoffs. So now, you know, in the immortal words of Bill Parcells, you never pick up where you left off the previous year. And so, yeah, they finished eight and two. So what? You know, they got to come out this year and and uh, be better than they were last year. You know, I think some of the excitement, Peter, stems around the division. And you mentioned it, how, how picking them to be the favorites. And I think if you're a Lions fan for the first time in, what, 30 years, you don't have a Hall of Fame quarterback in Green Bay to, to go through. And I think yeah. this division has really gone through Green Bay because of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers for so many years. You look at Chicago, still a young building team, obviously, you know, made some moves, added some pieces. But, but I think they're still young. And then, you know, I think Minnesota benefited from, you know, some lucky bounces last year. I mean, you You'll never see a team, I think, go 11 and 0 in one score games again. That was kind of a fluky thing. So, so you look at this division. I, I guess I'll I'll put it this way: If you were to look at the four teams in the NFC North, how would you rank them going into the season? Now, obviously, like you mentioned, it's July. We still got to see see them on the field. Injuries can happen. There's a lot that goes into it. But just Peter King, pre-training camp, how would you rank the NFC North right now with with the, with the four teams? Oh, I'd probably go Detroit, Minnesota, and Green Bay and Chicago, pick them out of a hat. You know, I don't know which one would be third. I think they'd be very close. And look, that's because nobody knows anything about Jordan Love right now. He's had one, probably, you'd probably say one really good, impressive quarter of football that he's played in his first three years in the NFL. He wasn't very impressive in his one start uh, against Kansas City. It wasn't awful, but he, he didn't really get a lot of momentum going. And, you know, Tim, the one other thing, let's talk about the Packers for a second. The one other thing I, I, I really would emphasize about the Green Bay Packers is, you know, let's go back to the first year of these two great Hall of Fame quarterbacks, okay? And all right, so let's let's look at Aaron Rodgers in his first year. First year as a starter, 2008. What are the Packers? Packers are 6 and 10. Rodgers uh is is pretty good, but you know, he threw 13 picks and they probably that year deserved 
to be, uh, you know, six and 10. And let's go back to the early days of uh, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers. And again, you know, to me, the Packers, either a lot happened early on when they when they brought in Favre, obviously. It's not only Favre, but it's Mike Holmgren. But, you know, in their first year, in his first year, uh, the Packers are nine and seven, and uh, Favre also throws 13 interceptions. I think I'm right there. But I think that's why you really can't look at Green Bay and have a great idea by saying, well, you know, Jordan Love is going to be this. You, you know, there are so many teams right now. You look at Atlanta. I really like Atlanta, but I have no idea what Desmond Ritter is going to be. I don't think right. anybody does. He hasn't shown enough yet. And so those are the kind of uh, those are the kind of questions that make this season so intriguing. Well, let's talk about the Vikings for a second. You know, I, 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 when I think about the Vikings, I think about a team that in Kirk Cousins half decade there, you know, I, I, you're going to have to check me on this, but I think I'm right in saying that in his five years, they've won one playoff game. And I think this year, if they have another disappointing postseason or no postseason, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they look for another quarterback. I, I shouldn't say I wouldn't be surprised. I probably have raised eyebrows because Cousins is a good player. The question is, do you want to pay a guy who you really feel like you might have hit his ceiling? Do you want to pay him $50 million a year? Or would you rather take your chances and start over at the quarterback position? And then, you know, as far as the Bears go, everything is pointing north for the Bears. I yeah. think they've had a tremendous offseason. But, you know, Tim, honestly, I, I, I can't look at the Bears right now and say, oh, my God, the Bears, they're, they're, they're going nine and eight. I, it, it just doesn't feel like that. It feels like they still have another step or two to go. And I still have to see it out of Justin Fields throwing the ball as well. Since let's stay on the topic of quarterbacks a little bit, Peter. You know, Jared Goff. You know, I, obviously when when he was traded here in the Matthew Stafford deal, was thought to be maybe a a, a placeholder for something new, something younger. Yeah. Um, but I, obviously, you you look at last year, and he was even good two years ago. But last year in particular, you know, over four thousand yards, completed sixty five percent of his passes, twenty nine touchdowns, only seven picks. Jared Goff hasn't thrown an interception in three hundred and twenty four passes, which is the fifth long a streak in the NFL currently. I mean, and, and, and he made a Pro Bowl. He was a, a replacement for Jalen Hurts when he went to the Super Bowl. So really a fine, fine season from Jared Goff. I know everybody loves to do the tiers with the quarterbacks and all this other things and rank them and put them in. But I mean, in the end, quarterbacks and head coaches in this league, you know as well as I do, they're they're graded on wins and losses. That's what it is. And um, Jared would be the first one to tell you he's got to win more games. But, but just what do you think of his play, where he's at? I think a lot of people for forget that Jared Goff is 28 years old. We're not talking about a 32 or 33 year old quarterback here. He still has, you know, a, a, a long future ahead of him. He's under contract for two more years. I'm just curious what you think of Jared Goff, his fit here. And and, and is, is this a team that, that can win with Jared Goff, can go to the Super Bowl? Can he carry them all the way? Look, when the Packers, when the Lions, excuse me, when the Lions were um, in their funk in the first half of the season i think i along with everybody else who analyzes this game looked at the lions and said man they're going to have a chance to take a really good quarterback uh, because they got two ones and you know they're they're in good shape and and all this stuff and there was nobody let pick a mid-season date, say on Halloween last year, there was nobody who didn't think uh, with a high first round pick, the Lions were not going to take a quarterback. And I think over the last, I think he went his last nine games without throwing an interception. 
Yep. I think in the last half of the season, clearly he showed Brad Holmes. He showed Dan Campbell. Look, I want this job. This job belongs to me. Uh, I'm going to take this job and I'm going to take it by the throat and you're not going to be able to replace me. And he always had it in his own hands and he still does. And I think he showed last year, knowing the pressure that was on him, uh, because there was tremendous pressure on him. But I, I would also, you know, Tim, I'd also make one other point about something that I think gets lost or got lost last year uh, with the Lions. You have to check me again on this, but I remember at the end of the year looking back and I said, how amazing is it? The last 10, 11 games, whatever it was of the season last year, Jared Goff was never sacked more than twice in a game. And he had several games where he wasn't sacked at all, but I think the, the, the play calling was terrific. I think the play designing was terrific. And I think their offensive line really stepped up and proved that it is a top half of the league offensive line. And that has always been something in my memory anyway, that has really plagued the lions. They might've had a good guy or two on the line, but, but right now, when I look at the lions, I don't see a lot of, uh, you know, gaping holes. I don't no. see a lot of huge problems that normally in the middle of July, a week or so before training camp, you say, oh, my God, they have this problem, that problem, and, and the other problem. First, they've got a franchise receiver. Uh, they've got a good to very good offensive line with – to uh, seemingly anyway, uh, you know, fr franchise type tackles. Um, you know, I don't know what you're going to get out of the rookie tight end, but obviously that's a big investment picking uh, the Iowa tight end in the second round. Um, you know, they will see what happens. I, my only, my only issue with the lions on offense, quite honestly, is I really like what Jamal Williams brought to them last year in all ways. And, uh, you know, I think, I think they might miss him some. I really do. I think they might, they really might miss him more than people think. And then obviously on the defensive side of the ball, um, they made some very good picks last year uh, in the draft. And uh, I, I think, they're, you know, obviously it's not all Aiden Hutchinson, uh, but, you know, Jane, getting James Houston low in the draft last year and having him play as well as he did. I, I think they have really answered a lot of the questions about, you, you know, do they have enough depth or are they going to be good enough to stick with the real good teams in this division? But, you know, it's it always with every team always it always comes down to the quarterback so i think if if golf continues the progress he made last year uh you know he clearly has um you know a quarterback friendly coordinator in ben johnson and uh, i i just i like the direction of this team yeah, I think fans do too. You just look at some of the young players. You mentioned them. I, you know, Kirby Joseph is in that mix too. Um, and then you get you bring in veteran guys like Cam Sutton, um, C.J. Gardner Johnson. You know, kind of solidify some of the weak points, which was their secondary last year. You know, they've got one of the best offensive lines in football, like you talked about, Peter. There's just a lot of excitement building around this football team. It, it finally seems like it's it's kind of their time with a good mix of young guys, a good mix of veterans. Like you mentioned, there's not a lot of holes, Brad. 
Brad Holmes has shown that he can build through the draft and 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 it, it, it's exciting around here and um, Lions fans can't can't wait we can't wait for you to come here make your stop in Allen Park and, and see it in person thank you so much for joining me I appreciate you taking the time and and good luck with everything this year everybody will read your uh, uh, Monday morning column it's 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 one of the best ones in the business we appreciate you Hey, Tim, really appreciate you asking. Good luck. And uh, when I come to town, I'll look you up. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate you.